sound sync. Brian, you are how the devil are you? I'm fine, and yourself? I'm not bad, to be honest. I'm doing all right. Been cold, eh? Yeah, when you're wearing jackets indoors yeah. like we are, and you've even got the scarf on indoors, you know times are cold. Yeah. Very cold, winter is here. So, um, being a sculptor, I mean, rewinding a few years as a young apprentice, I mean, what was it, what was it originally that got you into sculpting or gave you the idea that that's what you wanted to do with your life? I was very lucky actually because I went straight from school and I was the only apprentice ever in the film industry. So I was a professional sculptor at the age of 16. Wow. And they had turned down 12 before me and for me it was lucky 13. I was accepted and I did my apprenticeship at um, uh, Elstree Film Studios. Um, because the film industry was in decline, um, the day I came out my apprenticeship, I was made redundant and I went outside. I was lucky enough to get a start at a company in London and I was doing prestigious work all over London. I'd work on Vowed by the Queen and Queen Mother. And it was at the age of 23 that I got the call. The call. The call. The call. And you've still been at it until very recently. Was, am I right in saying, correct me if I'm wrong, Rogue One was your last film? It was my last picture, yeah. So I'd gone full circle in a way, although I did six, six years, uh, eight years before um, Star Wars. Um, you know, I'd gone full circle. What did you do in Rogue One? I'm not, I can't tell you. You're not allowed to, really, why? I can't, it's, it's just been out a year. I know that Disney... Really? It's in the contract, I'm not allowed to say anything. But of course you can talk about what you made in the original films, why, why is it different? Oh, it can, but then the contracts weren't like they are now. Oh, okay, times have changed. And Disney are much tighter on contracts than Lucas were, even if, though they tightened up a, a lot. If I name armour and props, you're allowed to like, move your head in certain <laughs> directions? <laughs> oh, people things? tried all things with me to get me Mind to talk. Mind tricks. <laughs> um, even a bottle of brandy has been mentioned, but... It uh, yeah, No, it doesn't. Oh, you're a tough man, Brian. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have to be. Let's talk about Darth Vader then. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, your, your book, yourself, yourself you've, you've said it yourself, you're living in the shadow of, of Vader in, in, in some ways, that is the most iconic piece that you, you worked on, well, it's fair to say, isn't it? The idea was that um, the book In the Shadow of Vader is because although I've worked on over 70 major pictures and done some really nice work, it's all, I mean, Vader is so iconic that everything else was in its shadow. And the second book, Beyond the Shadow, it's saying that because I've become pretty well known now, and my other work is seen as well. It's like saying it's beyond the shadow now of Vader. Mm. And we're going to come back on to Vader and Star Wars, but let's go through your other films in terms of the big franchises. The Indiana Jones? Yeah, all three. Um, I did some nice work on there, actually. The one that I probably most enjoyed was um, uh, Temple of Doom. And I did things like the 15-foot python that comes down out the tree. and. The actress was terrified of snakes and she wouldn't have a snake near her. So right. the one you actually see come down is what I sculpted. Harry Potter? Four Harry Potter films. Four Harry Potter this. films? Yeah. What was your, um, if you could choose one item that you sculpted on Harry Potter that you're most proud of, which one would it be? I think I preferred probably working on five most. I had some nice work, the Ministry of Magic. I did a big serpent. Um, I did the goblin on the, on the stage. and. There were 17 fireplaces where they walk into the ministry and there's all this ornate work around them. I did all that. And they were going to have 12 eventually and they liked them that much that they had 17 in the end. So let's talk Vader. You're back in that shadow again. How long did it take to make that costume? This is the original Vader, of course, we're talking about here. Yeah, I did the, uh, the mask and the helmet, the chest armour, shoulder bells and shins. Um, I sculpted it in clay initially on top of a plaster model that I was given that they moulded Dave Prowse and cast him in plaster. And everything I sculpted on it I knew would fit button onto Dave. Um, and initially I did a back and a front to the mask, but they discarded the back because it was so claustrophobic. Right. And even the chin vent was a last minute thing um, to put in. and. It was smaller on the A&H Vader than it was later. They made the chin vent a little bit bigger. Did you work on a subsequent Vaders? 
No, it's my Vader. My Vader was just used for the first. So it always three used the films. original. And it was re sculpted for the very la um, number six, the Sith. So that's a totally, and it's totally symmetrical. I know what you did in Rogue One. You don't. <laughs> and you're not Is it not what I'm it. thinking? Is it not what I'm thinking? <clears throat> you're not I don't thinking. know what you're thinking. <laughs> Vader, Vader. Um, I can't tell you. Okay, okay. <laughs> We're back here again. In relation to Vader, you've got a famous thumb. That's correct. Which one is it? This that thumb and is that a famous thumb. thumb. Fits in Vader's nose perfectly. So explain, and explain how, how that thumb earned its fame, the, the reasons behind it. Well, basically, I used my thumb initially to get the perfect nose in and then use tools just to tidy it up. So my thumb fits exactly. And there are Vaders that have been um, uh, made out there that are supposedly fan made and my thumb's too big for them. And really? I, can always, I always know if it's, whether it's linked back to the original Vader or not because my thumb fits perfectly in the one that's ones that do. You've almost changed Vader forever for me now because every time I look at him, I'm going to think of your thumb. Yeah, funny enough, I was sitting at a it's convention. It's a very nice thumb, by the way. Thank you very much. I was sitting at a convention with Dave Prowse and I said to him that my, um, my thumb fits perfectly in Vader's nose. And he said, put your thumb on my nose. Yeah. And we'll take a picture. So I put my thumb in yeah. front of it. You, you said, can touch my nose. No, he said, put your thumb on my nose. Right. Which I did. Yeah. And there is a picture of it. Wow. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, Jamie Stangrel told me to do this. Because he's a ridiculous human being, which I've discovered in a matter of a few minutes.